Now Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing a video on my MCATs. And if you're new, by the way, and if this is your first video, I filmed a video about a week ago with, it's kind of like, it was kind of like a vlog, and I just got my MCAT score in that vlog, so, um... It kind of just ended up being an opening my MCAT score video and seen my reaction to my score without me spoiling it for you here, then you could go watch that. I'll put it in the description box, but spoiler alert, I got a 519 on my MCAT, which is the 97th percentile. So yeah, pretty much uh, I'm going to start answering questions because I don't want to take too long with this video. I'm going to give you guys facts as fast as I can. So let's just get started. So the first and most commonly asked question I got was what type of books did I use? So prep books, I used Kaplan. I used the little set that is the, I believe it was 2015, but you definitely want to get the one to get the Kaplan prep set that is updated for the new MCAT because it's totally different than the old MCAT. So, and I didn't read the verbal book because it was just not helpful. So um, yeah, I just pretty much studied and learned all my material from the um, other, I think it's a six book set, so I just used five out of the six books. Um, personally, I do not like the Princeton Review or the Princeton books and stuff just because I think they're actually harder than the um, actual exam, which is like just discouraging and it does more harm than it does good. I didn't really use the Kaplan practice questions and stuff, I just used the Kaplan like reading material and um, yeah, I'd say it covered almost everything. The only asked question was um, how long did I study for? So I, this is kind of a tricky question because technically I studied for 18 days, so about two and a half weeks. I know a lot of you are like, what the hell man, that's so little time and it really is. I definitely was panicking. Um, I'm going to show you guys my schedule. Um, but the thing is you also have to keep in mind as a pre-med student you really should know a lot of this stuff on the exam as it is when it comes down to it actually what I found myself struggling with more, more was um, first of all stamina the test is very endurance heavy like you have to be able to sit there and use your brain efficiently like in test mode for like seven hours so endurance was definitely something I struggled with a lot I found myself getting things wrong at, the, at first that I knew it was just like I wasn't reading carefully like just using my mind enough to think critically like I would for like an hour or two hour three hour exam but like past that you really have to train your mind um, the MCAT is also about training your stamina training your endurance so um, I found myself uh, not really struggling with the science concepts or anything like that. It's not like I never really knew anything. It was it was more that I was, the reason I was getting low scores in the beginning on my practice test was mainly because I just didn't have stamina. I don't want to sound like a know-it-all or sound like I'm bragging or sound like anything at all, but I'm just telling you my side of the story so you know why I got the score I did in this time. I actually got A's in every single one of those courses that was tested on the MCAT, so biochem, gen chem, o chem. I've gotten an A or an A plus in every single one of those classes. So I, like, for my class itself, I think I've talked about this in a vlog too, I always study for a class, quizzes, tests, thinking it's gonna help me for the MCAT. I've been telling myself that throughout my entire undergrad. So every single exam in midterm, I treat it like I my grade depends on it because I wanna master that material so it's easier for me when I take the MCAT. And that's actually exactly what happened. So um, I knew pretty much all the basic like science and um, pretty much it was like engraved in my head already and I'm not saying that I didn't have to learn anything new I learned a lot of new stuff because the mem MCAT is memorization heavy that a lot of it is short term so I learned a lot of new stuff I relearned stuff but I'm just saying it's gonna be a lot easier for you and you can study like in this small time frame like I did if you study right the first time you're in these classes um, that being said something like psychology where it's like brand new honestly unless you're taking like uh, unless you're in a school that has like psychology that's specifically tailored for the MCAT um, none of your psychology classes are really going to teach you the exact terms that the MCAT wants so the psychology was completely independent it was definitely a very s-shaped curve where I started and then like I just learned a shit ton of new terms and stuff and then towards the end I was just learning a new term here and there every day um, when it was almost perfect so I would say that psychology was definitely like um, something I 
struggled to get in that time frame but I mean it's definitely doable then these 18 days guys I lived and breathed the MCAT I was not on social media for break so I just took those 18 days and I lived and breathed it I told you guys in another video I did about 14 to 18 hour days I would wake up um, and here's my schedule actually let me show you guys I'm going to do a screen capture and show you guys my screen I really emphasized on in these 18 days was take as many practice exams full length as you can because like I said endurance is something that you really have to train yourself on and I got a lot of questions in my Instagram on how did I sit there for so long studying I just kept telling myself guys and even now looking back I'm literally like how the hell did I do that like I sometimes surprise myself and you guys can too like I surprise myself with how damn committed I was to getting that good score and getting into med school and actually being somebody who's gonna be a physician like I am I'm surprising myself like when I think about it I sat there guys for 14 to 18 hours a day see I built I believe about eight full-length practice exams all directly from the AMC practice resources so I would say use those practice exams and those practice exams only. I never used a single Princeton exam, single Kaplan exam, I never used any other resource other than AAMC's practice exams and I suggest that for you guys. There's about, a, there's actually a lot that you can custom build. I custom built my own full length practice exams. What that means is you can see that I wrote that I have a total of 240 bio questions which is about four sets aka the uh, full length practice exam have a 60 question set of um, biology so I kind of just said okay there's about four sets that I can incorporate into four different practice exams and then I have um, 120 chem questions and that's two sets so and then 240 verbal 120 physics and so I'm kind of and it doesn't have to be exactly like the um, like the actual exam is going to be like you don't have to have a chem and then verbal and then bio and then um, psychology i just did that as much as i could but i also just had like chem chem bio chem bio chem like as many full length as i could because i wanted to train my stamina that was like very important to me and i think that's very underestimated I made these custom tests so there's test one test two test three test four test five was a half test and I made them red every time, every day I completed a day. So that's why they're all red now. So Saturday I had a sample test and then Sunday I checked my sample test and then I wrote my score down. So you can see I started at a 505. So if you're discouraged guys, don't feel discouraged. So um, then Monday practice test two, Tuesday check it. So you see my scores actually really progressively going up. You see me go from a 505 in the beginning to 511 because that one day guys, I'm telling you these days where you're checking, it should really be very, you should feel like a lot of shit went into your brain. Like I felt like a lot of stuff went into my brain every single day. So um, yeah, test two was only a 5012 and 515 then 516. Um, test three, I don't know why I don't have my score there, but test four was a 522, I got super happy. And then of course, Monday came and then it was 518 and then I got a 524 and I was super happy, but that's pretty much it guys. And then like on other days, I think I had one more day in the end that I just did flashcards. The AMC also sells flashcards. I would say that those are really helpful. There are some terms, especially like psychology terms in there that you can't find anywhere else. So um, yeah. and. I do have a doc guys um, with all of my psychology terms on them. Every single psychology term, almost I'd say a good 95% of every single psychology term I've ever encountered that I would say you have to know. I will share that with you guys and hopefully that'll be helpful. I didn't define them because it was just gonna take me too long and you know I only had 18 days. So I just wrote every single term and made sure I knew every single term on that thing. So I'm gonna share that with you guys and I'm gonna put it in the description box uh, because the resources for that list are the Kaplan book, um, the AEMC test, um, like the tests, all these tests I took from the actual makers of the MCAT and the flashcards. So I would say that everything on that thing you have to know. So I will share that with you guys and put it in the description box. But this is cool guys. So I just had made as many tests as I could, tested myself one day, checked it the next, tested myself one day, checked it the next. So as far as what I did on the days I checked, so the first thing I would do is go through every single question on the exam, make sure I knew every single multiple choice answer, everything that I should 
um, maybe I recognized in the, even the passage that I should know and um, I made sure that I kind of knew what the passage is talking about. ever a passage that I was like, holy shit, I don't know what they're talking about, but my time is running out, move along. When I would check it, I would make sure I'd read it again and at least understand what they're talking about because um, it, it's important to like know how to read the scientific journals and stuff. So I would at least, if there was something I was completely clueless on, um, I would make sure I would know how to read it. Um, but yeah, and then every multiple choice term, I would go look up any, and if honestly, it's kind of like going down a rabbit hole sometimes. Sometimes I would see a multiple choice answer, and then I would look it up in my book or online, and then I'd recognize something else that I should have known, and then I'd go down that path, and then I'd go recognize something else. Like sometimes you just gotta follow the rabbit hole, which is what I did a lot of the times, and um, that took me hours. So as far as reaching a certain goal, I would just make sure my goals of the day were just to do the practice exam on day one, and then on day two, they were always to at least get through the exam. So I just kind of followed whatever I didn't know. I never had a specific thing like I need to get through this. After when I would check my exams, I would make notes on things I would have a sheet and then I would write things I got wrong on test one and then I just write what I got wrong if you're just something that I also found helped me is if you're just um, in the shower or you're just walking around and you just so like sometimes I would find myself just randomly remembering something and I'm just like what was that again so like I remember one time I was going to bed and I just remembered like the Strecker synthesis and I was just like or the Strecker reaction whatever it's called but it's like something to make a reaction that makes amino acids um it's like an ochem thing and I just forgot what it was and then I opened my book up and like right before I was going to go to bed remembered it and the next day I kind of have that in my head now so it doesn't just like if you remember things either at least write them down or just go look them up that second it helps a lot so um, so they were about eight hour days and then I would do those little things at night before I go to bed and just you know here and there around um, throughout the day and then the next day though was a 14 to 18 hour day like it was I would wake up at 10 and but those days did give me a little bit more freedom on when I could eat I could walk around you know but it, they were also like really hard so when to take the MCAT, um, if you guys remember, I struggled with this a lot. I wanted to take it twice. I wanted to take it once at around January or like March-ish and then take it again in May or June. Um, that didn't work out though because honestly I just had a ton going on in my life and it was just really hard for me to make time to study. I would say honestly guys, if you can schedule it where you have a couple weeks before with no school whether that's winter break or summer break or spring break it's really important to really get and like dig deep into the MCAT like for me the most difficult section actually it's funny on my um actual MCAT um verbal or cars was my worst one um, everything else I did amazing in and actually I was doing really good in verbal and cars on my practice exams I would get like even 130s on them and I never really got one third all 130s and 131s before ever like I mean I would get like maybe 130 and 131 here and there on biology but like all of them like psych chem and bio like 131s and 130 like those pretty weird to me that I got all of those were like nearly perfect and then verbal I was actually doing and that ended up being my worst score like really bad like I don't think I've ever done that and it's not bad guys don't get me wrong 127 is still really good but I'm just saying like I don't think I've done that bad on on verbal or cars ever um, it can be really frustrating to improve your car score but honestly I would say just keep practicing it'll come to you just kind of always ask yourself why did I get this wrong and then go find in the passage why they chose their answer over yours like maybe you assumed something that's what always my problem was was I picked an answer that was kind of uh, I thought was implied but it was just an assumption I made when there was a more clear answer their MCAT is notorious for giving you answers that could be true but aren't necessarily true and your instinct may be to pick the answer that was like could possibly be true but there's gonna be a better answer in there that's definitely true so that's what I found myself getting wrong in cars a lot I would always pick the one that wasn't like for sure had to be fact so pick figure out isolate every single question you get wrong where in the passage they got their answer from where you got yours answer from and why theirs is better than yours but for the most part I would say just practice makes it better um, and also guys a lot of you also asked me did I take physics. I didn't take physics in high school and I only took the first half of physics before my MCAT. I didn't take the second half of physics. Um, I learned everything from the book and that was good enough for me. So um, yeah, that was good enough. I pretty much did well in physics on every practice exam. I never, the physics is very fundamental on the new MCAT. 
think I did, honestly, I knew every single physics question on the actual exam I took. In my academic timeline, you, the best time to take it would be after you've taken biochem, after you've taken gen chem, after you've taken a lot of undergrad courses and you've had time to read the books. Um, there's not really a specific time. I was a junior, or just finished my junior year when I took it and I feel like that was very rushed, but I think it, I fit it in pretty well, but I think that's the earliest you can take it. Honestly, I don't think you could take it as a sophomore or during even your junior year, maybe you could do that. But honestly, um, as long as you have your biochem and everything done, you might be actually able to take it during like your winter break of junior year. But um, I couldn't fit all that um, with my schedule. So I took it at the end of my junior year, which was still very rushed. And I barely made it into the 2018 application cycle. So um, yeah, I would say that's a good spot if you're trying to go straight out of college, um, then I would say it's good to take it during your junior year summer. Uh, right after school ends though so you can't really have a summer so like right after school ends start studying and just take it right then and there and then you can fit into that cycle and you're good to go but if you're taking a gap year i would say take your sweet time take it in like august or september after you've had the entire summer to study also a lot of questions i got were about if you're a sophomore if you're early like what should you be doing um i would say of course like i said earlier study your ass off in the classes you're doing. The pre-med requirements are there for a reason. They're not testing you on like totally different things. So the classes you're taking, pay attention in them, make sure you're getting A's cause like you're gonna, if you're putting in work then it's gonna pay off and help you, um, help you when you're studying for your MCAT. So really try in those classes you're taking that are related to the MCAT. And then also if you can, I would say read those books, like the Kaplan books um, as you're taking those courses cause why not? And that's what I did and it really helped. I remember everything um a lot of the times i did make mnemonics so um one that i still remember is snowdrop so if you write snow and then drop um s is southern blotting and it stands for um, dna test for dna and then northern blotting is for rna and then um what's the last one western blotting is for protein so i kind of just made mnemonics for things that i could find easy mnemonics for but i wouldn't rely on that i would say if you have a fundamental understanding you're kind of your brain will kind of web to get web everything together i wanted to quickly mention um a lot of you guys were asking um in my vlog who i was talking to and what the score was of my brother who i was talking to and kind of implied that he did better than me and you guys were like what the hell what did he get then and um my brother got in the hundredth percentile so um yeah so he's gonna actually be making a video as well on um what he feels like are really good tips they're gonna be different than mine for the most part so if you guys want to see that video i'm going to redirect you guys to his channel because yeah he's making a channel he doesn't want to be on mine but i'm just kidding no um but yeah it was kind of just the last minute thing we were just and we have so many relatives who constantly ask him like for his their kids like what should they do he's kind of always been like a little mini prodigy always getting a's and like always being like a genius so um yeah he got in the hundredth percentile um he took it last year so i'm gonna redirect you guys to his channel it'll be in the description box down below if you want to go check out his video or his channel and subscribe go do that so guys that's going to be it for this video i really hope you enjoyed let me know what you thought in the comments down below and i will see you guys